matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room, you can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work. When you go to church. When you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. We need answers. Why is the flat earth so important? Because it shows the deception. There are enough reasonable questions to create reasonable suspicion that we've been lied to. They can't afford to keep being asked. If God forbid everybody came and started demanding answers, and once they can't provide those answers, people realize they are busted. It can't be a mistake. It can't be anything but the deception and control mechanism it is. That is why they fear the flat earth. Flat earth is not a psyop. Flat earth destroys the psyop. Every psyop that's been used to control us. For as long as they've known about it. So this system has been in power and control for hundreds of years, ever since they convinced the rest of the world that they didn't know where they live. They created this fantastical scenario to make people feel insignificant and to follow those that appear to know better. They're just better liars, deceivers, that have no conscience and will do everything and anything to everybody and anybody they can to keep that power. Because people are waking up. And no matter how much they try to suppress this flat earth movement, oh, it's going to keep moving one way or another. You can see it. People are waking up. Their earth is indisputably not round. Is it possible that these guys are using stage magic, tricks? Um, look over here, look over here. And is it possible that the... Um, the world that we're living in has been misdescribed. I definitely know that the world that we're living in has been misdescribed to us and oversimplified, including the solar system model. It's been vastly oversimplified. It, it doesn't actually accord itself to the very accurate readings we can get today with our technology, right? Like, to, they never predicted that it was going to come to this. Yeah. If you can't figure out what difference it makes that the people running your world have fucking lied to you over and over your whole life, if you can't figure out what difference that makes, you're a fucking idiot. And if everybody would just come together and demand answers, they would not know what the fuck to do. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not... Uh, an eight-year-old's question. That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and and that's the way it happened. And, and if it didn't happen, 
it's nice to know why it didn't happen so in the future if we want to keep doing something we need to know why something stopped in the past that we wanted to keep it going and you can see the real location of the camera and the very bright and near earth out the window 10 or 11 years ago I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock, but it is a plasma. The Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Oh, well, that will never happen. Never happen. Never happen. Sometimes it's got something called a lunar wave. There are many videos showing the moon with a lunar wave. We don't know what that is. It's all a mystery. Do you believe it could possibly land on it? Absolutely it? not. You know, you've got a P900 camera now you can buy, and you can zoom in to the moon. It's supposed to be, by the way. 238,000 miles away in deep dark space. It's sometimes translucent. You can see through it. Whether you believe we went to the moon or not, everybody believes that there's a debate about it, right? Now, if you really have an open mind and you want to get to the bottom of it, let's let's have an open mind. Let's get to the bottom of it and let's let's take it to trial. First thing we got to do is examine the evidence. And the defendant, the government, says we destroyed all the evidence. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we. Uh, destroyed that technology and it's a painful process to build it back again. Yeah. You destroyed the evidence? Why would you destroy all that precious evidence of the greatest achievement of mankind? These guys are fucked. They destroyed the evidence? Okay, it's on now. Yeah. It would be an open and shut case. It's a painful process to build it back again. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! When you look up at the sun and moon, you see two equally sized, equidistant circles tracing similar paths at similar speeds around a flat, stationary Earth. Rise up and look at that great cosmic light and think about it that gets up in the eastern horizon every morning and moves across the sky yeah, yeah. with a kind of symphony of motion and paints its technicolor across the blue, a light that man can never make. They become so involved in thinking about man's progress, they forget to think about the need for God's power. The experts at NASA, however, claim your common sense, everyday experience is false on all counts. To begin with, they say the Earth is not flat, but a big ball. Not stationary, but spinning around 19 miles per second. They say the Sun does not revolve around the Earth as it appears, but Earth revolves around the Sun. And the Sun is actually 400 times larger than the Moon and 400 times farther away. That's right. You can clearly see they're the same size and distance. You can see the Earth is flat. You can feel the Earth is stationary. But according to the Gospel of Modern Astronomy, the Earth spins 1,038 miles per hour under your feet and revolves 67,108 miles per hour around the Sun. Copernicus calculated the Sun's distance from Earth to be 3,391,200 miles. The next century, Johannes Kepler decided it was actually 12,376,800 miles away. Isaac Newton once said, it matters not whether we reckon it 28 or 54 million miles distant, for either would do just as well. How scientific. Science! Benjamin science, Martin science, calculated science. between 81 and 82 million miles. The moon is actually a semi-transparent luminary and not the solid spherical desert planet that NASA would have us believe. In fact, it is likely that both the sun and moon are not densely physical at all and are simply luminous flat disks able to pass by or through one another during eclipses. 
The Sun and Moon luminaries revolve around the Earth once every 24 hours for the Sun and approximately 25 hours for the Moon, illuminating like spotlights the areas over which they pass. The Sun's annual journey from tropic to tropic, solstice to solstice, is what determines the length and character of days, nights, and seasons. What can be more common than the observation that Standing at one end of a long row of lampposts, those nearest to us seem to be the highest, and those farthest away the lowest. As we move along towards the opposite end of the series, those which we approach seem to get higher, and those we are leaving behind appear to gradually become lower. It is an ordinary effect of perspective for an object to appear lower and lower as the observer goes farther and farther away from it. Let anyone try the experiment. The apparently uprising surface of the Earth upon or over which it stands will converge to the angle which constitutes the vanishing point, or the horizon, beyond which it will be invisible. Heliocentrist would have you believe the very opposite of what every human who has ever walked the Earth has seen with their own eyes. It is obvious to any child and sovereign-minded adult that the sun, moon, stars and planets, every light in the sky above, revolves around the motionless earth beneath our feet. It is also plain to see that the sun and moon are both approximately the same size and situated relatively close to earth, not 400 times divergent and millions upon millions of miles away. To abandon your senses and everyday experience in favor of such unfounded science fiction fantasies is a fallacy of appeal to authority so extreme that it leaves the brainwashed believer impotent to trust his own natural instincts and forever thereafter chained to the fantastical explanations of astronomical charlatans. To moon! Yeah? Ever wonder what those sparkly dots are up there? Pumba, I don't wonder. I know. Oh, what are they? They're fireflies. Fireflies that uh, got stuck up in that big bluish black thing. Oh, gee. I always thought they were balls of gas burning billions of miles away. <laughs> Who told you something like that? <laughs> what mook made that up? <laughs> yeah, pretty dumb, huh? Oh, you're killing me, son. It's maybe the night the my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer All the stars are closer All the stars are closer It's maybe the night the my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer All the stars are closer to stay fixed in their constellation patterns, night after night, year after year, century after century, never changing their relative positions. If Earth was truly a tilting, wobbling, spinning space ball, as NASA and modern astronomy proclaim, the star patterns would never look the same two nights in a row, let alone be fixed in exactly the same constellations for thousands upon thousands of years. Maybe the night the machines might let me know All the stars are closer All the stars are closer All the stars are closer Maybe the night the machines might let me know All the stars are closer All the stars are closer All the stars are closer I want to talk about flat earth and I notice things like when you search it in a search engine, all you get is misinformation. You don't even get real critical thought on it. Well, I saw the blanket censorship, which tells me there's truth to it. Tells me that they're panicking. They're in panic mode and they don't want us to have real tangible information. More importantly, they don't want you to think critically about it. See, we're in the information age. And this is what the tactic is. This is why Logan Paul just did a video on Flat Earth. It's why Shane Dawson just did a series of videos. It's to discredit the real truth. True. 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 
It tells me that there's something here that they don't want you to know. It tells me that mainstream science, NASA, and more importantly, our government powers are panicking. So they're hiring through the same companies that they own, because there's only six companies, by the way. If it's a wild conspiracy theory, why do they need to discredit it? If it's a wild conspiracy theory and it isn't the truth, and no one's gonna believe it because they're smart enough to think on their own, why do they need to discredit it? Why do they need, and these same people, keep, keep in mind, Logan Paul, Disney is the parent company. I'm pretty sure he gets a check from Walt Disney. Why would they then put out these misinformation campaigns? I mean, ask yourself these logical questions. I think we know the answer, and I think we know the reason. Is it possible that we're living in that Truman Show today? We're living on the flat earth with the dome, the firmament. As we start to look around us, we start to wake up, our eyes open, maybe that third eye opens, we start to understand, wow, this isn't what I thought it was. Maybe instead of being a worthless blob of goo that came from nothing and then developing into apes that were ooing and aahing and then eating bananas like a bunch of idiots, maybe instead of that, we actually are the center of the universe. Maybe we are special. In fact, maybe there is unbelievable evidence of creation, but the government has decided to hide that from you. Why? Why is there so much misinformation? Why is there a giant disinformation campaign going on right now when it comes to things like flat earth? Are my eyes lying to me? Or can I trust what I'm actually seeing? But Christopher, the earth is a globe. I was told that when I was one years old. They said, look, this is a globe. Isn't it interesting? It's one of the first things that you're actually taught. The earth isn't flat, it's a globe. Even though for hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of years, they thought that the earth was flat. Oh, but Christopher, we have all these images of outer space that show that the earth is a sphere. Really? Where do the images come from? NASA. Oh, you mean the same NASA that is our government, our secretive breakaway government that hasn't been back to the moon since the 1960s. That NASA? Have you ever seen it with your own eyes? How come no, none of the electronics account for curvature of the Earth when you're flying a plane. None of the engineering of bridges and train tracks, buildings, all kinds of infrastructure that goes for miles and hundreds and maybe thousands of miles, none of it accounts for, in its actual engineering blueprints, for the curvature of the Earth. I mean, if I was building a giant bridge of hundreds of miles, wouldn't I have to account for the curve? Or is it possible there's not a curve and that we've been lied to for a reason? Everybody in this room was taught the story of how Columbus went before Queen Isabella of Spain and he was going to prove to her that the world was... Round. The globe. <laughs> So this world is round story is 100% bullshit. It's total fiction. Yet how did our grandparents learn this? We learned this? Our grandchildren are probably gonna learn this. How come? Because history is pop culture. And that dude who jumped out of a perfectly good balloon, um, what's his name? Felix. Felix Bumgardner, edge of space jump. The, the honesty of it would greatly diminish what I think people thought he was actually doing. And not only that, they made sure to photograph him standing there with a really wide-angle lens, which curves horizontal lines. You see this curvature of Earth's surface, and he's like, wow, he's in space, look at that. No, he's not! It's almost overwhelming. When you're standing there in a pressure suit, the only thing that you hear is yourself breathing. You can see the curvature of the Earth. You can see the sky is totally black. At that height, 
you don't see the curvature of the earth. <laughs> you just don't. That stuff is flat. You can see the curvature of the earth. You don't see the curvature of the earth. You can see the curvature of the earth. You just don't. That stuff is flat. Flat. Wide angle lens, which curves horizontal lines. With a really wide angle lens, which curves horizontal lines. So trust your eyes and trust your experience. Trust your feeling, trust your intuition. Look out, see the horizon flat. Feel for yourself. You're not moving. Just sit still. Sit still for a second. You're not moving. You're not spinning around an axis at a thousand miles per hour, rotating around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour, spiraling around the galaxy at 500,000 miles per hour, and shooting off from a big bang at 67 million miles per hour. You're not. You're motionless. You're just sitting there. Just sit still. What does that even mean, sit still? You think you could sit still with all those motions? Just feel like you're moving. Feel that? Same thing you've always felt. Nothing. Ever. Nobody's ever felt movement. Nobody's ever seen the earth move. Nobody's ever 
ever seen the Earth curve? Maybe you just got fooled by some masons. Mark Twain said, It's easier to fool people than to convince them they've been fooled. That's why it's so hard to convince you you've been fooled. I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. <laughs>